Hey guys, it's Spooky Noodles, and I have a book haul. Uh, mostly, actually, actually, like 99% of this book haul is, well, that's not a correct percentage, but... <sighs> most of this book haul is, uh, Tony Bacon's auction. So, yeah. The other just came in the mail with it, so I was gonna throw it in. And actually, that's where we'll begin. This is a book I got on eBay, and I came much sooner than I thought it was gonna come. But it's Bloodkin by Ronald Kelly. So, yeah. Oh, let me read the back for you guys. This one seems exciting because it's a vampire novel. And I'm starting to get into vampires again. I don't know when this happened, but I just was like, part of me is like, I really want to read Salem's Lot, so. You know, the vampire curse of the Cra Cravens ended over a century ago when Joshua or Josiah, sorry, Craven was buried in an unmarked grave and, they, and a stake driven through his heart. But tonight, his ancestors have awakened their great grandpa Craven. They're planning a party in the backwoods of Tennessee, and the folks of Green Hollow are in for their ugh, I cannot read today guys I apologize are in for the night of their lives the last night of their lives a teenage girl is found with her throat torn open and her body completely drained of blood a young bride sprouts fangs and turns on her husband a little girl's pet rat develops a murderous mind of its own a preacher goes insane and slaughters his entire congregation before feasting on their blood. In the best-selling tradition of Stephen King, the author, Ronald Kelly, gives us a story of blood-curdling terror that will keep you awake long after the, nights, the lights have been turned out. That's pretty cool. Uh, I thought I'd get this book because I'm currently reading a Ronald Kelly book. And I'm really digging it. So I, I like the dude's writing. I like the dude himself. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought I'd give it a try, you know? I, not a try, I'm I'm giving it like my full blown attention when it, it comes to it. It's probably gonna be the first vampire novel I read in my vampire TBR, which I have not started or announced yet. So, you know, I'll do that soon. Uh, but I think this one's gonna be the first vampire novel in that TBR, then Salem's Lot following it. So we'll see, I still need a paperback of Salem's Lot. So, but currently I'm doing a coming of age TBR and that's going great. So yeah. All right, let's move on to my auction shall we and I'm going to have to take some stuff out looks like one of these little baggies pop let me set them down right here okay now let's start with uh, these little buttes and then we'll get to the other ones later. Well, let's start with the paperbacks. At least I think that's what's in this bag. Ah, yes, paperbacks. All right. You guys can't see it, it's off screen. All right, we'll first start with John Saul's second child. This one, I don't know what it's about, honestly. Um, I, I'm thinking this is a follow-up of, uh, of between, like, after, uh, I don't know, uh, what the book's called, but, uh, I don't know if this is a follow-up of another book or not, um, but, uh, yeah, let me read the back. A lush, secluded Maine Seasons Resort. Summer playground of the super rich. 100 years ago, something disturbed their play. Horror came to a village, and through no one knows it, and though no one knows it, the horror has never left. 
It waits a, for a shy young girl, outcast by her friends, by her beautiful half-sister, even by her own mother. She knows how it feels to be unwanted, angry. Soon, she will know the touch of unholy terror and the rage of blood-drenched vengeance. Beware, beware the second child. So that's John Saul's second child. Sounds interesting, I guess. Uh, I'm collecting John Saul books at the moment. I don't exactly know why I started collecting him. I just, one day I went to a uh, Salvation Army and boom, I found a bunch of uh, John Saul books. And I went to another one and boom, I found more John Saul books. So I'm like, you know what, I'll collect this dude. So I've been going on the internet and finding books by him. And, and the auction that Tony Bacon had was, boom, John Saul. So I, I went for it. All right, uh, move out of the way, Charger. Next, we have some Dean Koontz books. Now, I am a little hesitant to read Dean Koontz, but I'm going to give The Voice of the Night a try. And if I like that book, I'm gonna continue reading. I have a book up on my bookshelf by him. And recently, my buddy E read the book. Well, not recently, but he read the book and did a retro book review of it, and he said it wasn't good. So now I'm hesitant to read that book. But uh, yeah, these ones though I hear are are good ones by Dean Coons. So let me just start with Cold Fire by Dean Coons. That was a big ass picture of Dean Coons on the back, as he would say, or not E, but, um, I don't remember the YouTuber's name, but he called this Balding Koontz, back when Balding Koontz was writing, uh, Balding Koontz apparently read some, read, written some good, wrote some good books. Jeez, I can't talk today either. There isn't a back to this book, so I can't read it to you what it's about. Um, oh, here, inside the flap. Here it is. In Portland, he saved a young boy from a drunk driver. In Boston, he rescued a child from an underground explosion. In Houston, he disarmed a man who was trying to shoot his own wife. Reporter Holly Thorne was intrigued by his strange, the strange, quiet savior named Jim Ironheart. She was even falling in love with him. But what power compelled an ordinary man to save 12 lives in three months? What visions haunted his dreams? And why did he whisper in his sleep? There is an enemy. It is coming. It is called... Cold Fire. So yeah, that's Cold Fire. By Dean Koontz. Alright, next we have... Now I don't know... I just saw this as a big thick book. And I didn't know Dean Koontz wrote big thick books, but apparently he does write big thick books. So I was like, why, why not give it a shot? So I gave it a shot. And once again, you got Baldwin Koontz on the back. So it might be a good book. <laughs> um, and it's Strangers by uh, Dean Koontz. When I say thick, that's what I mean. It's thick. It is a good 681 pages. So, yeah, I don't know if it's good or not, but that's kind of a pretty cover with the motel in the background. You barely see it because of, you know, the big letters of Dean Koontz, Strangers. Then you see the little tiny picture of the motel. But, uh, yeah, it's a thick one, and I was intrigued, so I got it. I don't know when I'm going to read it, but I got it. And then this one I have heard very good things about. And uh, I think there was another book that he had under a similar title to this one. Um, I forget what it was called though. Um, oh, Twilight Eyes, that's it. Twilight Eyes was the one I own. And I think my friend uh, said that it wasn't that great, so I'm hesitant to give it a try. But this book is The Servants of Twilight. 
And this one doesn't have a Bald and Coons on the back, so, uh-oh. Oh, no, it does. It's Bald and Coons, so we're good. An ordinary parking lot in Southern California. Christine Scavello and her six-year-old son are accosted by a strange woman. I know who you are, she snaps at the boy. I know what you are. A scream, a threat, and then a grotesque act of violence. Suddenly, Christine's pride and joy, her only son, is targeted by a group of religious fanatics. They branded him the Antichrist. They want to kill him. They are everywhere. Dun dun dun! So that's Servants of Twilight, or The Servants of Twilight. And now we move on to bigger and better things. No, I'm just kidding. We're just moving on to some very, very, very healthy paperbacks here. And that, I already own this book, but the cover I have is whack, y'all. And this cover I enjoy more. I think it probably tells more about the book itself. And uh, that is Island by Richard Lehman. I just dig this cover. I have this book already, but it the cover is is lame. It's like a picture of an island and it's all red, you know, dark, you know, ominous. But this one is not like that. It has a resort boat out there and then it has a uh, switchblade, I guess, switchblade. Yeah, switchblade. Um all bloodied up and uh yeah island let me read the back for y'all when eight people go on a cruise to in the bahamas they plan to swim sunbathe and relax getting shipwrecked is definitely not in the script but after it, the yacht blows up they're stranded on a desert island luckily for them their beach camp located as fresh water and firewood and there's enough food to last them out just one problem remains as they wait to be rescued. They are not alone. In the jungle behind the beach, there's a maniac on the loose with a murder in his heart, and he's plotting to kill them all, one by one. So that is Island by Richard Lehman, and I just dig that cover so much. I, this is the book I will probably not read, because look at that spine, other than the little thing right there. I might read this version just to show it off at work, you know, because I'll be like, this is the book I'm reading and people will be like, oh, that's interesting. Whereas the other one, it would be like, this is the book I'm reading and I'd, they'd be like, oh, okay, pretty bland. So yeah. And then next, and definitely not least of the paperbacks, is another very good condition book and that is Richard Lehman's Funland. This is a book I've been looking for for a while. And it's been one that's been eluding me. But I finally found it, y'all. And there's like a skeleton in a, in a toll booth or whatever you want to call it. A ticket booth. And it's, I'm guessing you go and buy tickets from the skeleton and enter Funland. So, yeah. Let me read the back for y'all. The seaside resort of Belletta Bay is not the carefree place it used to be. A series of unexplained disappearances has cast a dark shadow over summer pleasures. And, and, and holiday makers are being threatened by a growing army of leering, foul-mouthed bums who have taken over the promenade. 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 I cannot read. But now Beletta Bay is fighting back. Convinced that the down and outs are behind the abductions, a gang of local teenagers decide to wreak violent decide to wreak violent re revenge. Led by a charismatic Tanya, the gang graduate from simple beatings to sinister punishments, and as the, they grow more daring, their campaign leads them to the old abandoned funhouse, 
where the real truth of the disappearances await them. Huh. So this is about a band of kids who beat up on bums and then find out what's really causing disappearances? Huh. Did not know that. All right. Now we get to the fun stuff. We will start with Bentley and Little's hardcover, The Summoning. I'm not taking it out of the plastic, y'all, until I'm ready to read it. This book is in excellent condition. Just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, uh, yeah. Uh, there's no back to it, and I'm not gonna open it to read it. So I apologize. If you want to know what this book's about, look it up. It's The Summoning by Bentley Little. Alrighty. Next, we have... The Lake by Richard Lehman. Now, I would not call this the best Richard Lehman cover. Um, it's pretty bland. I mean, it's just a dock and water and clouds and a moon. But it tells you it's about the lake, so... And once again, there's no back on this hardcover because, you know, hardcovers don't have what's on the, you know, what the book's about on the back, so... Um... But yeah, this is, uh, The Lake. Another really good condition hardback. And it goes with my collection of hardbacks for Richard Lehman. Yeah. And last, but definitely not the least, since I saved the best for last for y'all, is Night Cage by Andrew Harper, which is not really Andrew Harper. Well, it is Andrew Harper, but it's a pen name. It's a pen name for Douglas Clegg. And I'm collecting Douglas Clegg books. And I think in another video, I actually unboxed uh, a paperback of Night Cage. So, and the cool thing about this book is I'll actually open the package up for you guys. I don't like opening the plastic up because I don't want the book to get beaten up on my bookshelf. But here it goes. You're going right back in the plastic once you're done, boy. All right, so this is a cemetery dance edition of Night Cage, by the way. And the back's just plain. And the cool thing about this is, if I can find it, dun 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 dun. dun. I passed it. It is signed by the man himself, Douglas Clegg. It's book number 234. And, and in uh, 652 numbered copies that were sold, it's number 234. So that's pretty neat. It's a pretty neat book. And man, I'm like kind of shaking a little bit holding it, you know? because I don't have any signed editions of any book. So, and I don't even know if I like Douglas Clegg yet. But, uh, from what I read about him, people like him more than they like, uh, than they like, uh, Sean Hudson. Which is crazy because Sean Hudson is a beloved, uh, horror writer in the community. Let me just really quickly uh, seal this back bad boy up. So that was my book haul, guys. I hope you enjoyed. For a second there, my heart skipped because I did this whole thing and I, I forgot. I did was like, oh, did I hit? Even, did I even hit record? But I did. So I hope you had a good day, guys, and yeah. What book haul, what books did you recently get? I'm open ears. <laughs> All right, guys, see you later.